What's up guys, Salty Jewels back again today with another all-in-one review. That's right, I did not say board device review, I said all-in-one. What I'm talking about is the Moab by Hellfire or the Addy Smith. Typically when I hear the word all-in-one, I'm thinking of mid-range gear that is coming out of China. I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with that, but when I think of high-end all-in-ones, I'm thinking of Boro devices. I mean, think about it. Our community is called the Boro community because it is centered around the tank. Well, this company has attempted to take that leap of faith to try something different, to create a complete device that uses its own tank system. We are gonna be pairing up the Moab with Hellfire's own RBA, the Exoset. So we're gonna have a complete set with device, tank, and RBA. Super excited to get into this. And yeah, I mean, really, that's all that needs to be said. I'm really excited to get down low to check out this packaging, to see this mod, and to see how this tanking system works. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Drew. Drew has been the plug lately, providing me with all of these hard to obtain devices, letting me review them, and just know that you are greatly appreciated. So, yeah, with all that being said, let's go down low and let's check out this Moab. definitely like the look of this thing i love this stainless steel oh let me rephrase that i like the silver i call it stainless because it looks like stainless but i'm always wrong in trying to pinpoint the materials used so i do like the silver and the black look it's very sleek very professional and if you were just to put this in a lineup this would definitely stand aside my eyes would probably be immediately drawn to this just because of the general, you know, overall look to it. That metal on there is really bright and stands out. And I, I do enjoy it. Skulls really, they're not my thing, but that is the logo of the company and I don't really have anything against it. But here's the thing. I believe, don't quote me, I believe when you order these that you can actually get it in a few different varieties. I think they have a cross stitch pattern right here. That's probably the one that I would have went for personally. And I think that they also have just a plain black. They also have different kind of engraved tanks that you can get as well. So let's just go over a few things on the mod. At the very bottom, there is our DNA 60 big screen. As you can see, we have a common trend now with new board devices. They mainly always utilize the DNA 60. Rarely do they utilize the die codes BF 60, but that's just because they are harder to get a hold of. We have our fire button right in the front that is also made out of the same material, I believe, as the top and bottom plate, our two select buttons. We have our airflow right here that is front facing airflow, our juice window, not our boro window because this is not a boro tank, but this is where we will see the level of our liquid. At the very top, we have our, I believe, our Hellfire flush nut. I think this is specific to this device. We'll do a little bit more research about that once we get further along, but I believe that is just specific to this mod can only be used on the Moab. I, I don't know how I feel about that really. I like my things to be cross compatible, but that's a big thing about Hellfire. They really aren't worried too much about what everybody else thinks. They just want to do their own thing. We have a battery cap right here. I like this battery cap. It's not your normal, you know, kind of pain in the ass, twisting around a hundred times battery cap. I believe this is a quarter turn. So let's give it a quick spin. And there it is, very simple and definitely very easy to use. As you can see, our battery orientation is negative side up. And the Moab does utilize a single 18650 battery. So as far as surface stuff kind of goes, that's pretty much it. So far, this has just been truly a unique experience. Now, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good thing, but I can for sure appreciate their attempt and their approach at doing something different with an all-in-one system. So next we're gonna check out this tanking system that is one of a kind. And I'm really excited to see if this is A, easier than a Boro tank, and B, something that is going to be worth kind of switching to. Because if I'm gonna use a whole new tanking system, something that I'm not used to, it's gonna take a lot for me to go to something that I'm not used to and have to adapt to that 
compared to something that I've been using now for a year plus. So let's get into that and see what we got. So before we get into this tanking system, we have to remove our Hellfire flush nut. And I forgot to mention that there is our USB charging port. So now that our Moab flush nut is out, that is the one right here, you can see that it is for sure longer than the billet box standard flush nut. It has about the same amount of threads, but what is longer is the chimney section on the bottom. So this flush nut is going to 100% be exclusive to the Moab. And I believe the reason that it has this extended piece at the bottom is because the tanking system is longer than a standard Boro tank. Our Moab tank is just gonna come out by giving it some pressure to one side or the other, and it's just going to pop out like that. Now that the tank is out, we can get a good look on the inside of our tank cutout. There is our connection pin right down there on the bottom. And again, here is a front view and a back view of our airflow right down here and our juice window cutout. So here's our tanking system. Very boxy sort of design. On the back, we have Hellfire. I thought that was a really nice touch. And if we take a look at this juice window, if we have any Bioshock fans in here, this really reminds me of just the 1950s subnautical diver helmet. I thought that was a really cool look for it. I think there is a way to open this up with this tab, but I was having quite the experience trying to get that open. This isn't mine, so I'm not going to force it. But another thing that stood out to me was that if we take a look at both sides of the tank that are exposed when it is installed in the mod, you're going to notice something is missing and that is a way to refill this tank while it is installed in the device just so you know the way to fill it up is to pull out this little insert and then you have two holes right here i believe the second one is just to relieve some of the pressure from the first one when you're filling up with juice so it doesn't you know kind of flow out but i mean what is going to happen essentially is that when you run out of liquid in this tank you're going to have to remove it entirely to refill it back up. Now, if you're using an integral tip, that's not going to be too bad, but to remove the entire flush nut to get this out, to refill it, to put it back in, to re-put in the flush nut, it's going to be a process. But at the same time, I do appreciate them executing their own design and implementing their own tanking system. Another positive is that this is going to hold more liquid than your standard boro tank. Right down here, I will show you exactly how many milliliters it holds. If you look at this top piece right here, what you're going to do is you're going to match, match up the two ends to these two cutout or openings right here on the top of the tank. So you're just going to get your fingers in there, turn it until these two ends line up with these cutouts. And then you're just going to pull up. So now that we have gone over our tanking system and our device, let's go ahead, wick up this exo set, and then we'll throw it inside of our tank into the mod and we will bring it back up top. As I showed you earlier, we got this little top piece off. So now that it's off, all we gotta do is drop it right down into the center. And it typically falls into place. If it doesn't, all you gotta do is kind of move it around with the chimney and you'll hear it snap in. So there is our airflow pin. And as you can see, it lines up perfectly with that airflow cutout right there that lines up further with the airflow cutout on the device. So we're going to take this top piece back again, line the two cutouts up with the cutouts on the tank, and push down. Now to get that secure, we're just going to give that a little turn. And now it is locked in the place. All there is left to do is to fill it up and install it into the mod. You can 
can see I'm running into a little bit of an issue here. I've tried a few times to make sure that that airflow pin was pushed up into the RBA as much as I could. This also happened with the Mob Mini from Monarchy, but it's clipping onto the edge of the device. Figuring that I don't want to scratch this up, it definitely scared me a little bit because I just tried to shove that in there and it got stuck and I thought I had damaged the materials, but I, I haven't, it's completely fine. But still, I, I don't know what's really going on here. I would really, I, I don't know, it's a minor inconvenience. All you really have to do is push up on this airflow pin and it's gonna offset the RBA. No juice really comes out, but it's still a minor inconvenience that I really don't think should be an issue with this device. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's just the cutout on this box in particular, but the few RBAs that I have used on here, they all kind of stick out. So what you're gonna have to do is push up the bottom of that pin, kind of pop the RBA out of place, and then you're gonna have to work it in so it doesn't clip on to the edge. So we got our single 18650 battery installed and I did forget to mention as well the materials used for this device is actually some really nice materials for our buttons we have titanium for the top and bottom plate we have stainless steel and the body is actually going to be a Delrin as long as the tank and the glass that we see inside of our tank is referred to as mineral glass. So the Moab utilizes just a DNA 60 big screen, really not too much more to go over here. What we've won over this chipset about a thousand times, so I say it is about time that we bring this back up top and we talk about it. Here we are with our Moab Exoset combination, that black Delrin body with the stainless steel, 304 stainless steel top and bottom plates, really just make this a very, very attractive setup. Let me also say, for once, I was right to assume that something was stainless. Usually I get it wrong and I got somebody jumping on my ass about it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pat myself on the back for getting this one correct. I do like stainless steel. It's very resilient and it keeps a very nice shine. So on top of the stainless steel top and bottom plates, we also have those titanium fire and select buttons. Typically, you're not gonna see companies using titanium, and that is purely because of how expensive the material is to buy in bulk. I believe that the titanium buttons come standard on all Moab renditions, and really to me, that's just what screams high-end. A lot of companies like to claim that they're high-end, or at least they strongly, you know, kind of suggest it, but it really just shows me that Hellfire, Addy Smith, or whatever you want to call them, kind of back that up. And they back it up by using those higher quality materials. So enough rambling on about materials used. Let's take the Moab for a spin around the old block. Like I said, we got a DNA 60 chipset. We got our wattage right over here, battery, and then we have our ohms, voltage, and amperage. Got a coffin coil sitting on the inside, ohming out to 0.50 and goddamn the screen was upside down the whole time and we got it sitting at 35.2 watts let's take it for a spin so as you just heard we are giving plenty of airflow on the moab and just by the looks of it it didn't really seem like there would be as much as there actually is. And I like that, let me tell you why. In my opinion, it is not the body of the device's responsibility to regulate the airflow. It is the airflow pins that are given to you with your RBA that are meant to regulate. So we can take away airflow, but we can't add more. So that's why I would prefer a larger opening. And this really isn't a larger opening. This is just providing us with plenty of airflow and I definitely like that. When it comes to ergonomics and hand feel, the Moab is just really nice. We have the soft and silky smooth Delrin body, which can become 
kind of fragile at times and i don't mean this device in particular just delrin as a material but with it being reinforced with this 304 stainless steel top and bottom plate it really makes it a solid device and gives it some sturdiness that i really would like with you know delrin devices now let's talk about the tanking system of the moab like i said down low i appreciate their attempt to do something different to utilize their own design but at the end of the day i'm going to be blunt i do prefer the boro tank heavily over the moab tanking system and let me tell you why to refill my tank i don't want to have to remove my flush nut remove my drip tip push out the tank fill it up put it back in put the flush nut back in and my drip tip. That is a very long process. And I mean, yeah, we have 8.9 mils opposed to the Boro tanks 5.5 or six, but still I, I don't really, you know, in some situations that's not possible for me because I'm not gonna have the right tools to remove the flush nut or I'm not, you know, there, there's plenty of reasons to not wanna do that but mainly it's just easier to do it with a bore tank where I can just pop off my panel, slide down that glass and fill it back up. But that's the thing about Hellfire Addy Smith. I've been told time and time again, I don't really know this company, so I can't really speak for myself, but I've been told by many people that they are a company that wants to stand aside from the rest. They're one of the few companies that created their own, this isn't even a board device, this is an all-in-one. So they want to stand aside from the crowd, they want to do their own thing, and they want to utilize their own products. And that's another thing about this tank. It does not take the square RBAs like the bridged or the vape shell. Now, for me personally, I think that any all-in-one device like this should utilize the bridged. It's really just, it's the RBA that kind of signifies the Bohr community, at least in my opinion. And we can all agree that the bridged is a huge product. For So for, you know, something like this to not utilize it, I think that, you know, I would definitely prefer. I hear that they are coming out with a tank that does handle the bridge 1.2 and the vape shell and any other square rbas that you can think of and i think that that's good that they're kind of you know adapting to the demand but the silver lining to the two or three issues that i found with this tank is that they don't have to rewrite the whole script and design a new mod to fix the issues with the tank because that's all it is it's a tank they could do something like add a little plug on the side to refill it without having to remove it completely. They could push up the base of the inside of the tank to make create more clearance for those airflow pins. And they are already making a tank that uses the bridged. So I think that they're adapting, they're working with the community, which is good. And besides the tank, I really loved everything about this device. Another couple of things that I thought were worth mentioning is this quarter turn battery cap. I love quarter turn battery caps, super easy to use. They're nice and springy and you're not sitting there, you know, like you're unscrewing a flush nut. So I do like that. And I also wanted to mention, shout out to Esco. He has been really helpful with, you know, giving me the specifications, materials used. And he also wanted me to tell you guys that this USB port that you see right here is not meant for charging. It does not charge your batteries. What it does is connects to eScribe to make modifications to your DNA 60 board or to check its specs. So all in all, it has been a fun and unique experience trying the Moab by Hellfire. This isn't my device, so I will no longer be using it. I will be sending it back, but I can tell you this, if they continue to make changes and update this tank system, I will definitely be more likely to go out and obtain one for myself. And that's not to say that I don't like it. I do. I like the hand feel. I like the materials used. I like the airflow. I like the DNA 60. It's all good. They just have to make some more changes to the actual tank. Thank you guys for stopping by. We're going to be trying something new. I'm going to add a Discord into the description. It's not a must. If you want to just be able to go and hang out and chat with some like-minded people, 
please check it out. We're also going to be doing some more fun stuff. I don't want to ruin the surprise just yet, but if you would like to join up. Again, thank you for watching the video. If you are not subscribed yet, please do so. Please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Special shout out to all you guys that have been giving me the thumbs down lately. I love it. Keep it coming. Keep those analytics boosted. No, I'm just playing. Uh, we got some cool stuff coming up in the works. We got the Ion from Protocol. We also got the Cubix coming up. I'm excited to check out that one. And yeah, just stay tuned. And I appreciate each and every single one of you.